Hi everyone, uh, this video is all about the weird things that happen in Adobe XD. Uh, the trouble is, uh, like when you're either self-taught or this part of the course, is there's some things that are going to make sense later at the end when we're awesome and we know everything, um, but that'll catch us out really early on. So I want to describe them here now, and if you do get to the end of this video and you're like, oh, I kind of understood, but not really, uh, that's kind of on purpose, introduce it early, and we'll cover it over and over again throughout the course, and it'll be super easy at the end. First things first is this little panel over here. So we've got one, two, and three. Okay, we'll cover plugins in a bit. We're gonna look at assets a tiny little bit right here, because it's gonna show us some of our issues. And then there's this layers panel, which we spend most of our time on. Okay, so we've got a confirmation. See, these are artboards, AKA pages. There's our um, homepage marketing, which I like at the top. Okay, and uh, product details, which I like in chronological order, up to you. Okay, no real drama there. Okay, so those are the pages. What is this pasteboard? It's cause you, you might not have it. Watch this, if I delete this, I go back to my artboards, well, I've got nothing selected. Look, no pasteboard. If I undo it, look, we've got this pasteboard. It's kind of like its own page, everything around here. You will always have pasteboard. Nobody's ever that tidy that <laughs> things end up, uh, well, you know, that end up all on a page, you end up with these crazy workings all over the place. If you do that, don't worry, I do it too. So that's this weird pasteboard thing. Nothing too weird about it. It gets kind of weird when you do this. Mm. Half on, half off, look at that. You can sometimes have something that is kind of on it. Let's do it here. Can you see that? Where'd it go? That's the pasteboard, so it's just that guy. So there's no pasteboard. That thing's down there. He's just holding on by the teeniest, tiny, visiblest bit uh, onto this page here. So that happens. Sometimes you end up like going, oh yeah, I'm just working on this project, working on this project, and it goes, ah. <laughs> okay, so that's one of the issues. It's not even an issue, it's just, now you know. And that's what the pasteboard thing is. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is when you are copy and pasting from one document to the other. Um, actually, I end up doing this quite a lot. You're like, oh, how is he jumping between documents? Um, on a Mac, it's Command and the Grave key, or Control and the Grave key. And you're like, the hang is the Grave key? <laughs> it's the tilde key. And you're like, that's not more helpful. It's this key here. Uh, that one, I think it's this one here, but they're often combined with this. I think that's the tilde and that's the Grave key. I'm unsure, but you're looking for that on your keyboard. Okay, so if you hold down Command and hit it on a Mac, um, it will change between open documents and a Control and hit it on a PC, and it will do it. So that's how I kind of toggle between and copy and paste quickly. Anyway, that's a little bit of a sidetrack. Let's get back to the weirdness. So uh, I'm gonna just, well, let's go to, let's say this one here. And let's say that you want to grab this, okay? And you wanna copy it and paste it and use it in your document. And you're like, great, I'm just gonna grab it. And you're gonna ignore that little diamond in the top left-hand corner, because you're like, I don't know what that is. Okay, and that's gonna kind of cause this problem. So we're gonna jump over to our document. I'm gonna paste it. And oh, look at down here, it says, well, if you're pasting links across documents, you can publish a library. That is well above what we need right now, okay? Uh, so too hardcore. So we're gonna close it down. We'll look at libraries and components later on. So what you need to do really is if you bring stuff across and that warning appears and or you go to this little option here. Can you see it says libraries? If I click on that, you've got all these components in here. We'll learn components later on and it will be easy. Okay, but for now we need to kind of just disassemble it so we can work with it in a, yeah, not gonna give us trouble. The problem is if I copy and paste this, okay, and I got two of them, if I update one, they both update. Okay, which is kind of cool later on when we're more experienced, but for now it causes us just problems. So what we do is we bring in components that kind of come into our component library or in our layers. Let's have a look on our, if I select it, you kind of see there, it's got that diamond icon. It's doing some funny stuff. All we need to do is right click it and say, ungroup component, okay? And then you right click it and you say, oh, there's still another one. There's components within components here. Good work uh, on the, well, the designer who made the other UI kit did this, okay? Sometimes you need to keep going until there's no ungroup components. Now it's just a regular old circle with a rectangle and will cause you less trouble. If you ignore it being a component, it will probably still work, but you'll end up changing one icon and everyone will update. Plus there's that warning down the bottom there. So I guess I throw this in early in the course because yeah, it could be troubling when you, cause I'm gonna get you to make some icons in a second. And you're gonna run into that problem. 
that's why I've done it here. And if you don't understand what components are yet, don't worry, we're gonna cover those later in the course. So what I'm gonna do now is, I kinda of got it down here, I'm gonna say actually just group them back together. Now it's just a dumb old switch. <laughs> Doesn't do anything fancy. I'm gonna give it a name. Okay, over here I'm gonna call this one toggle switch. And the other thing is, this is depends on your level of OCD. I'm gonna click on my assets panel. Okay, and this we're gonna cover later on as well, but there's these little components, okay? We don't need them, okay? We've turned that into just its own little group. They're not connected now, okay? I know they're not connected because there's no little diamond in the corner, and if I right-click them, it says, it doesn't say ungroup component, just regular old ungroup. You can see all of this stuff, I've selected them all with a shift key, and I'm gonna get rid of you. Super tidy, look how tidy we are. Was it helpful? Maybe it wasn't. If it wasn't, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on with the course, you will learn components later on and you probably won't run into too many troubles. But that's the component issue you might have. Um, you will find, like this one here, uh, if I copy this from this person's UI, it's whoever made the UI kit. Did they turn them all into components? The Google people did. This one, if I copy and paste it over, first of all, I know it's not because it doesn't have the little diamond in the corner. And if I paste it over here, where is it? There it is, I put it in my pasteboard. You can see it didn't appear under my components and in my layers panel, bloop. Okay, it's just a group. It doesn't have that little diamond. Okay, I know it's a group. Can you see that little folder icon? That's kind of like the signal for being a group. You can double click it to look inside the group. Oh, it's a group in a group. And then there's some paths that make this up. That's all right. But I know it's not a component. It's not gonna give me any trouble. All right, let's get into some editing. So um, we bring in, I'm gonna ignore those ones there. I'm gonna bring in some icons. So it's up to you how you bring them in. File, import, we'll use the shortcut. We'll do what I do and just go, what do I want? In your exercise files, I want you to bring in uh, the account one and maybe cart one, those two. Okay, and I just drag them on, that's what I do. So when you're bringing in icons from different places, they'll be different sizes. Okay, and okay, and that's one thing. There are different colors. So what I can do is I can say, because what we're gonna do now is the next step is trying to get these things to match, okay, and some of the issues you might run into. Because I'm gonna ask you to make some icons and make a little matching set. So what I wanna do is first of all get them the right size. Now, trust me when I say it's easier to work on them when they're really large. If they're really small, let's say they're really, really small like this. Okay, let's have a look at them. And let's say that I, they're still vector, so it's great. I'm zooming in, okay. And um, let's say I want to move this um, little circle here, because like, that annoys me. <laughs> okay, so to get into it, I can do one of two things. I can right click it and say ungroup, okay, and ungroup it, ungroup it, ungroup it until it's in bits, okay. Or I can do kind of uh, object editing, okay. So I can go into it by double clicking it. So I can double click it, okay. Double click it again, there you go. So it's a way of um, going inside of a group without having to ungroup it. Because I can move it around now and then double click the background and come out. Okay, so it's up to you whether you like to ungroup things or double click them to go inside. You can kind of see it here. I went inside of it by double clicking it. I've double clicked this again and I've got this thing here. So fill 11, uh, one, one, sorry, yeah, 112 is this wheel. And we're gonna run into the problem with it being very small. I've exaggerated it to be very small to kind of ex exacerbate the problem. I think that's the word I want. Watch this, if I go move just a little bit across it, just dip, dip, ba, ba, ah. <laughs> Okay, it's so small, it's trying to deal with such a small, it's actually trying to align to pixels, if you know what those are. It's just, it's got nowhere to go. It needs to line up with one of the pixels down here. You can't see them, okay? The little squares that it's trying to line up with, so it doesn't really, it's not really fun anyway. Okay, so what you can do is grab both of these, because they're SVGs. Remember, Command minus to zoom out, or Control minus on a PC. I'm gonna drag them nice and big, holding Shift, so that they get nice and big. Another trick while we're here, okay, hold Shift and Option on a Mac, or Shift and Alt on a PC, and that will kind of, instead of going from the top you know, top right, it will go from the center. Ooh, so that's Shift, Option on a Mac, and Shift, Alt on a PC while you're dragging it. I do that loads, and I'll do it loads more in the course. So, let's make it nice and big. Let's get you nice and big as well. Get them roughly the right size to try and get these things to match. Yeah, yep, yeah, looks good to me. And um, so now when I double click it to go inside, double click it again, watch, I can have lots of adjustment. Okay, let's get in there. So loads of adjustment. So I can move it in nice little small pieces. Um, make it bigger and bigger to get this kind of adjustment you need. You can use your arrow key. Look, tap, 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 tap. It'll move one pixel at a time. 
Okay, so I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. Gigantic icons. It's okay, we'll make them smaller in a second. We're gonna get into drawing later in the course a lot more, okay? But for the moment, we're doing enough to get by to make, um, you know, make our wireframes usable and over to the client and to the customer for testing. So scale them up. The other thing we're gonna do is we are going to try and like, there's this little bit sticking out now. So to edit it, I'm gonna double click it, double click it again, this bit. Okay, and I'm gonna click it once more. So I'm gonna go inside the actual shape. Okay, so in this case, there's a group. And there he is there. Okay, there's my cart. If I double click it, I get inside this other group. I didn't make it. <laughs> Somebody made it grouped inside of a group. Okay, and then inside of that is this kind of part here. Okay, which is uh, fill uh, 110. And if I go the last little bit, I can start to see all the anchor points. Okay, and I can do some adjustments. So this is what you can do. And this one has two points there, which is kind of weird. Again, I didn't make it. And these are the things you're gonna run into. This one here, look, it's hide, it's hid behind there, it's great. All right, so that's how you do your adjustments. You might decide that actually this one, holding shift, I can click all of these and maybe, there you go. Okay, move this down a little bit. Okay, and kind of fiddle it and move it around and get it how you want to try and match these two. The other thing you might do is to get the stroke weight up. Okay, or at least matching. Can you see this one's like slightly thicker than this one? It's not really, but I'm gonna imagine it is. I'm gonna show you what to do. So, a couple of things I wanna do is I want to get these colors to match. I click on you, use my little eyedropper, grab you, you know how to do that, right? Excellent, so they're matching the same color. And let's say I want this to be a bit thicker. It's a bit thin and spindly for what I need, okay? Or at least this one needs to be thicker. Let's do it for this one. So what we're gonna do is, at the moment, it is kind of this fill that I can adjust, but I can add a little line around the outside. Watch this. So I've clicked off in the background, kind of like deselected it, click on it once, and say, let's add a border. Let's add a big border, and five, okay? It needs to be the right color, so I'm gonna click on it and say, you. Okay, so my stroke or the border matches the fill, so I can't really see it, but watch this. I can click in here and use my up arrow. You can see I kind of make it filler, fuller, or lighter. I might decide that that's what I need for the size, okay, or the way it's being viewed. And same with this one, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add a border. I'm going to, in this case, copy the properties, because it's basically the same. Edit, copy, you edit, paste appearance. Okay, and you might decide that actually this one just needs to be one little square. That one's 11. I'm gonna go down one to 10, and now they're perfect. Perfect-ish. All right, so that's how to get to matching. Let's look at the last little weirdness that happens in Adobe XD when I'm scaling. Okay, so they are massive now. So I'm gonna zoom all the way out. Remember, Command-0 or Control-0, everything. Look at these ginormous guys. So um, I wanna scale them down. So let's grab two of them. Okay, I've duplicated them, and I'm gonna make you nice and small. Watch this, get it down to like icon size. Whoop, down to icon size. Where are you? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Look what's happening. You're like, oh. <laughs> And I'm exaggerating it to show you what's happening. Often what people do, they'll just go, yep, and not realize they've actually done what, we're, what I'm gonna explain now. So let's go really small, because what ends up happening is the stroke or the border, Come here, come here, buddy. It's still 11. That guy's 11, and that guy's 11. So he doesn't come down proportionately. There's a way of getting around that, okay? And it is, oh, let's leave that guy where he was. Okay, this fella here, we're going to right click it and we're gonna say something called outline stroke. It's gonna stop it being this uh, adjustment. We can't adjust the size again easily. Okay, so you're gonna kind of do it once you've finished and getting them all matched up. But if I outline the stroke, nothing appears to happen differently, but except that when I scale it down, you can see there it scales down proportionately. Okay, and that is a more appropriate size. Hard to click. <laughs> okay, but that is the difference. Strokes do not scale. They stay exactly what you put them as. That is true of like these buttons here as well. And that's by default really handy because it means that I can make a big button, you know, and it's not proportionately thicker than this button. It's the same size, okay? All right, that was a video that had to be made with some strange things that happen. What were they? Uh, when you copy and paste, sometimes they come through as components. And just right click them and ungroup component until they're gone. And if you're really tidy, delete them from the components. 
Okay, you don't have to, just if you wanna be nice and tidy. The other thing is the artboard, okay, that is this page here from our layers panel. It's considered a page on its own, and that's where these guys live when they're not on a page. And they can sometimes, accidentally, be on a page and you not realizing it and disappear, gone. What else did we learn? We learned that we can either ungroup or just double click on an icon to get inside of it, okay, to make adjustments. And if we keep clicking, eventually we can start editing shapes. And the last one was that the strokes do not scale. They stay the same. And we can right click and outline stroke if we need them to kind of stay fixed. All right, I hope that was helpful. If it's a little bit murky and you're like, oh, I kind of got it, as we go through this course, it'll become like, you'll be like, oh, why didn't we even have that video earlier on? It'll be that clear, <laughs> hopefully, if I do my job right. All right, that is it. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course, there'll be a link in the description, it's called Adobe XD Essentials, there'll be a card up here you can click as well. Uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.